Hi, Dr. M here. Do you have difficulty getting your child to listen to you and follow directions on the first request? If so, join us and we'll show you how to take care of that so your child listens the first time you ask something. Hi, it's Dr. M. If you are constantly repeating yourself to your child over and over and over again, telling him or her to do things three or four times and they won't listen until you start screaming or your face turns red, then you need to learn how to teach your child to follow directions on the first request. Come back with me 35 years in time, back to the 1980s. I'd like you to join me at a workshop I did then. It was a live workshop then, of course, now we're going back in time. And at that workshop, we talked about ways to teach children to follow directions on the first request. So come on back, 35 years. The first way to destroy a child is to tell your child to do something two or three times so the child learns from experience that I do not have to listen to my parent because my parent will always tell me again. There is not one child on the face of this earth who cannot follow his or her parents' directions on the first request, unless, of course, the child had a hearing problem or a neurological problem. But other than that, if a child is not following directions, is because the parent has taught the child not to listen. When you repeat a direction to a child, what you're doing is teaching the child, you don't have to listen to me the first time because you've learned by experience, I'll tell you, two or three times, or as a parent I saw at the office earlier in the week said, I have to tell my child things 10 times before he'll do it. That's the parent's decision. In PST, we teach parents, when you give a direction, the child follows it on the first request or there must be an immediate consequence. So if you said to Johnny, Johnny, you left your clothes and your shoes all over the floor of the living room, pick it up and put it in the hamper right now. Ten minutes later, Johnny is sitting in front of the TV and hasn't touched the clothes. The parent would simply say, I told you to pick up your clothes ten minutes ago. You didn't do it. Because of that, there will be no television for the next 24 hours. Now pick it up and put it away. And of course, if the child doesn't, he might end up losing TV for a lifetime. <laughs> However, that's the child's decision at that point, because through all these techniques, you're giving the child the choice. He has the choice of putting his stuff away or taking a consequence. If, on the other hand, you were to say something such as, what's the matter with you? Pick up those clothes. You're a slob like your father. Get in there and pick the stuff up. Of course, nobody here would, pr would probably do that. But if, if you know somebody that might, if you know someone who might do that, what you would be doing is telling the kid, you don't have to listen to me because I'm going to tell you again. And the worst thing that will happen is I'll get upset. A child grows up five or six years through childhood and learns that directions will be repeated. The child goes to school and the teacher says to the parent, your child doesn't follow directions. He doesn't complete his work despite having an IQ of 155 and being two years above grade level. After he writes his name on his paper, he feels he's done enough work for the day. Because this child has learned that he doesn't have to follow through with assigned tasks and obligations because nothing will happen to him, there'll be no inconveniences. So the next time you decide to repeat a direction to your child, remember, you are teaching your child to be non-compliant and not to listen to you. Thank you for traveling back in time to the 1980s to learn how to teach your child to follow directions on the first request. This is Dr. M. Bye-bye.